I'm sure you've seen plenty of catch, clean, and cook videos, but how about forage, clean, and cook? here at the old oyster tree you'll notice that it has toppled over I remember wondering if the fact that it had oyster mushrooms growing on it every year meant that the tree was sick or something like that well I guess we have our answer huh but this has not stopped it from producing yummy delicious oyster mushrooms so I figured I would come out here and collect some of these things and take them in the house, show you how to clean them up a little bit and make some fried oyster mushrooms. Notice how these oyster mushrooms form in these little uh, kind of like almost shelf-like clusters. Not really shelf-like, but kind of stacked on top of each other. This particular species, I believe, is one called Pleurotus austriatus. It's one of several different species that people commonly call oyster mushrooms. There are a handful of different kinds of oyster mushrooms. These, um, I've heard people refer to them as winter oysters because here we are in December and these things are still popping. So I'm just going to grab me a few of these. I don't even have a knife with me, so I'm just going to kind of try and tear them. And they look pretty good on the bottom. Notice how on the underside they have gills that kind of go down a ways on the stem. It's another identifying characteristic for an oyster mushroom. People say that this particular species of mushroom has kind of a fishy smell. And I'll be honest, I, I've really never noticed a fishy smell in the fresh specimen. However, if you leave these in your refrigerator or out on the countertop for a, a day or two, you'll really notice that they, they really do have a, a smell of, it smells like fish. All right, I'm gonna grab some of these, I guess kind of larger specimen, and we'll leave some of the smaller ones like this to mature a little more. Maybe I can make another trip out here. There we go. I'm looking at the bottoms of them. These mushrooms, these oyster mushrooms, tend to uh, get kind of buggy. There will be a lot of little bitty tiny bugs in between the gills. I guess maybe it's been cold enough that these don't look too bad. This might be an easy cleanup job. Sweet. Grab one more here. Uh, oops. There we go. And I believe this right here should be plenty for me to have a nice little lunch. Let's take them in and clean them up. To clean these mushrooms, you really want to use as little water as you can possibly get away with. So I'm here at the kitchen sink. I'm just going to turn the water to kind of a trickle there, you see. And I'm going to get started cleaning these mushrooms. I have a knife and an old toothbrush that I'm going to use to kind of scrub away some of this stuff. I'll start by, notice at the bottom for, on some of these, I pulled away some of the tree that they were growing on. So I'm, I'm just going to cut that away. There we go. And again, I'm noticing that I really don't see a lot of bugs, which 
is awesome because that's usually the part that, that requires the most water. These are fairly clean mushrooms, but when you get all of the bugs, they're, they're little bitty tiny things, and they just completely infiltrate all of those gills. And that's where, you, where I usually have to use so much water to flush them all out. But these, I think, are going to be much easier. So, we're going to start by just trying to brush away some of the, the dirt and debris. I'll use a little bit of water on the toothbrush. That won't be so bad. The thing is, these uh, mushrooms have a tendency to absorb a lot of water, and it kind of messes up the the palatability, I guess, the texture of it. And I'm just looking in between the gills and if I see anything that I think needs to come out, just make sure I brush it out of there. And that one is good enough. There's probably a little bit of dirt still there, but a little bit of dirt don't hurt. Try another one. This one, there's a little bit of dirt in the gills. And again, when you get stuff inside of the gills, that's when a lot of times I have to resort to the water. Let's see what we can do here. Brush away some of the debris from the top. And now we'll try and brush to the debris out of the gills. And yeah, that's working pretty well. Excellent. Let's take a look. Really not seeing anything in the gills that I'm concerned about. I think that one's good to go. Again, we're going to have to cut some of the, the base of the mushroom away. It's got the tree embedded in it. <laughs> check the bottom there's a little bit of dirt you can kind of see Let's see what we can do with it coming right out awesome I picked some of these earlier in the season when it was I mean it, around Thanksgiving we, we were still in the 70s here Fahrenheit and so the ones that I picked earlier, they were just completely infested with bugs. And I had to pretty much waterlog all of them just to get the bugs out. So for these, I decided to kind of uh, wait until things cooled off a little bit. And I figure it's killed off most of the bugs. So yeah, these look a lot better. A little dirt there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch me clean every single one of these mushrooms. Well, before I go, let me show you this. Um, notice that there's white kind of at the bottom of this one. I think, I think that's where spores have fallen from another mushroom that was above it. Or maybe where some mycelia has grown from the base. I notice that as these mushrooms get older, you begin to see that form kind of right around in here. I think you can use this to start your own mushroom spawn. I've done it a few times and it works really well. As a matter of fact, right over here, I'll put a link to a, a, a video where I started my own oyster mushroom spawn on cardboard. But I don't think you want to sit and watch me um, clean mushroom after mushroom after mushroom. So I'm going to uh, cut the video. And I'll bring you back once all these are clean and we're ready for the next step. Back so soon. No, I, I thought I'd bring you back here for a second. I did find just a few of the little buggies that like to uh, get in these mushrooms. I don't know if I can get them on camera because they're so darn small. But right in there, you see those little specks between my thumbs and that gill? 
those are the little bugs that will infest these oyster mushrooms and like I say once they're in there they're pretty tough to get out sometimes it's helpful if you have maybe a toothpick or something like that and you can go in between the gills manually luckily there's still few enough in in these specimen that I can use my toothbrush and just brush them out but like I say if you have some that are, are not wanting to come out of there you can get yourself a toothpick and run it down in between the gills or last case worst case scenario you'll run water in through the gills and that will help flush them out something else that you may want to watch for while you're cleaning these mushrooms up I don't know it depends on what your tolerance is for bugs but occasionally you'll see holes in the mushroom and they'll kind of start in between some of the gills a lot of times you'll just notice a little hole and if you follow it you tear the mushroom open and you'll notice that eh, this hole this mushroom has kind of been excavated a little bit think about all the little tunnels there oh look at that there can you see that the little larva that's starting to crawl on my thumb Yep, those are the things, some of the things that will make the holes in the mushroom. So, I, I don't know, some people say, hey, bugs are just protein, right? But I don't know, it depends on your tolerance for that. Again, if you see holes leading into the mushroom, you maybe trace them down, see what you got going on. And if you're not one that's fond of, uh, of possibly eating some bugs, you can throw this specimen out, right? So you can see this one has a hole leading into it right there. Let's cut this thing open. See what it, we got inside. That didn't look too bad. You can see right there where that hole was leading. This one I'll probably go ahead and keep. If however I'd seen more tunnels like in this other specimen, I could see where there were several tunnels in there. The thing about the tunnels is the tunnels are formed when these bugs eat their way through the mushroom. And anything that eats also poops. So, um, if, I, if I ate this, there's a good chance that I would also be eating some bug poop that was kind of there in those tunnels. Man, we'll throw this one out. This one, though, is probably okay. And see, here's another example. Um, I was trying to, I thought I saw um, some dirt, a little speck of dirt or something in there. You see the little dot. And I kept scraping at it and it wouldn't come out. And finally I realized it was a hole. I opened it up. And this one, you can see, see that little dude squirming around. And then there's another one right here. There were three or four in there. So yeah, that's definitely something you want to watch out for. Unless you just want the extra protein. Okay, we have these things cleaned up. Um, so far, I've only thrown out, I think, two. So, the next thing I want to do is cut these into strips. Uh, you, can, you can probably cook them however you would like. They are fairly meaty mushrooms. Um, once I have them fried up, they'll, they'll be kind of almost like a, a little bitty chicken tender or something. I like to cut mine into strips this way and if you want to you can still as you cut you can keep an eye out for little burrow holes and things like that. I've heard both sides of the argument as far as the bugs go. Um, I, I, I've heard some people say eh, the bugs aren't going to hurt you a bit. Just cook them up and eat them. And then I've heard other people say that um, if there are too many bugs, then it's, it doesn't necessarily hurt you. However, um, I have a, a little hole right here. I'm just going to cut that chunk off right there. The rest of that should be good. I have heard, though, some people claim if the, the mushroom is too infested with bugs, oftentimes it can cause... Uh, an upset tummy. Also note, um, 
these mushrooms, I, I'm sure what these are. These are Pleurotus austriatus. Um, they are non-toxic. However, before you go eating any mushrooms that you find out in the wild, make sure you get a positive identification on them. And also be aware that even though a, a particular type of mushroom is not toxic, not everyone's uh, little tummy will tolerate all mushrooms. So it is possible to eat a mushroom like this that is 100% safe, but it still causes you to get an upset, uh, an upset stomach. So, the first time you try any particular species of mushroom, the best thing to do is to start off with just a small portion and make sure that you cook it really well. Eat a little bit of it. Give yourself, I don't know, 24 hours. See what happens. And if your body handles it all right, then you should be good to go. Here's a big one. I hope it stays all right. So far, so good. Uh-oh. Nope. That one's pretty well eaten up inside, too. Tell you what, though, this one's big enough. I think I can cut that piece out, and we'll be good. Cut that away. To be totally honest, I normally wouldn't be that picky about it, but since I'm on video, I don't want y'all thinking I'm gross. It's bugs! So, yeah, I'll go ahead and toss out the buggy parts. And so we have a nice little pile of oyster mushroom chunks that I need to flour, and then we'll fry. For my batter mix, I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to use just a little bit of flour. I do like to put a little bit of cornmeal in. I like the texture that it gives me. And it shouldn't take too much for just these little mushrooms here. So I'm going to get, I don't know, that's what, two-thirds a cup of flour? I don't even need that much. There we go. Just some flour. And I'm going to mix that with about equal parts cornmeal. Because that's the way I like it. If you have some secret ingredient that you like to use in your, uh, in your meal for your fish or your chicken or whatever, by all means use it. I'm sure it would taste wonderful. These mushrooms are, are really good. Mix that around a little bit. I'm not going to put any seasoning in there. All I'm going to do at the end is salt and pepper these things and chow down. So, but like I said, if you have some ingredients, if you like to season your, your batter mix or anything like that, it would be wonderful that way. So just go for it. I'm going to bring a bowl over here. Crack an egg. Put that in the compost. Now I'm just going to roll my, my pieces in a little bit of egg. Roll them in my flour cornmeal mix, or whatever you chose to use. And set them off to the side. Let's speed this process up a little bit. So I'm going to be pan frying these things in some canola oil. I'm going to turn my burners on. Pour in some oil and give this a second to start heating up. I think we're about ready on the oil. Here's what our mushrooms look like before we throw, we toss them in. I'm just going to put them here in the hot oil. You can see as soon as I drop them in, they start doing a little sizzling. I have these cooking over, I don't know, about a medium heat, I would say. And I'm going to let them get a good start before I mess with them. When I cook, I have a tendency to over stir things, especially if I'm frying something. And by the time it's finished, all the batter is gone. So I'm going to give this a minute so all of the batter can get nice and brown on the parts where it's in the oil. And that way when I start flipping and moving things around, it doesn't just fall off. Right about this point, you really start to smell the aroma of the cooking mushrooms. It smells wonderful. So far, I've had these cooking for, I don't know, maybe five minutes or so. You can see the, the parts that are touching the oil are beginning to brown pretty well. Probably, I'd say maybe another five minutes or so, and we'll be ready to eat. 
All right, I'm gonna let this cook for about one more minute. So I'll go ahead and add my salt. I like the flavor of these mushrooms anyway. So I don't require a lot of seasoning. I don't like salt particularly anyway. So I'm not gonna use a whole lot. However, I'm a big fan of black pepper. So we're gonna pepper the poop out of these. That's one thing I wish I could grow here in Arkansas. And I may at some point try and get my hands on some and grow indoor to grow it indoors. If it ever came down to zombie apocalypse, black pepper and bananas. <laughs> Those would be the two things that I missed more than anything else. Food wise. One last stir. I'm gonna start scooping these out of the oil. And I have a plate prepared over here with a paper towel. That way it can soak up any excess oil. There we go. I'm going to let these cool for a second before I take them over to the table. But I'll see you when I get there. Okay, I'm not going to eat all of these. If my kids found out that I made fried oyster mushrooms and didn't leave any for them, they'd be so disappointed. So I'm just going to throw a few of these on my plate with... A little bit of leftover lasagna, and I'm going to have myself a nice little lunch. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If so, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, leave us a thoughtful comment. If you have any, uh, any recipes for oyster mushrooms that I don't know about, let me know down in the comments. That would be awesome. And if you would like to follow along as we continue to try and turn our home into a homestead, then be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when to be back for more daily sustainable living.